Today's Bible study is titled An Heir of God Through Christ. In our previous session, we found Paul closing his discussion of the promise of Abraham saying, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. We noted that as members of his body, believers, be Christ's, and thus we are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise, as well. Today, Paul continues regarding just what we are heirs of and how. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Galatians 4 verses 1 to 7 KJV Let's take a closer look. Paul uses an illustration here which would have been well understood at the time of the writing of the Galatian epistle, having to do with process of how an heir as a child came to be an heir as a mature son. First, he notes that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors, with tutors and governors here being illustrative of being under and thereby subject to the Mosaic law. But this being under, such was, until the time appointed of the Father. Paul says that in the same manner, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, showing that in like fashion the Jews in bondage to the Mosaic law and Gentiles had long since been given over to a reprobate mind. But again, this was only till, when the fullness of the time was come, in the Father's will. And, when the fullness of the time was come, God implemented his prophesied plan concerning Israel and sent forth his Son. Note that the Son of God was made of a woman, but also made under the law, for the Mosaic covenant in place at the time. And throughout Christ's life leading up to the cross, he lived under and by the Mosaic law and his message was consistent with that law, for grace was still an unrevealed mystery. And Christ's purpose, in accordance with prophecy, was to redeem them that were under the law, as Christ states repeatedly. Note that this redemption was not for the Gentiles, however, Israel was to be a kingdom of priests to the Gentiles. But Paul continues to describe God's mystery purpose, that we, Jew and Gentile alike, might receive the adoption of sons, with adoption meaning to receive into, in this case, sonship, which was not part of Israel's prophetic plan. And the point of it all became, and because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, a most personal manner in which we as spirit-sealed and indwelt sons call upon the Father. And Paul continues that, since believers are spirit-sealed and indwelt sons, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We are mature sons with our status as God's heirs through Christ, now. And though we still wait for the for what is described in Romans 8 verse 23 by, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body, example, our bodies still await redemption, but our spirits are fully redeemed. Believer understand you are an heir of God through Christ and the Mosaic Law has no limitation on that standing. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.